There are a few ways to figure out the molecular geometry for CH2F2. This is difluoromethane. The first way is we can look at the Lewis structure here and look at the steric number. So the steric number, that's the number of things attached to the carbon here, the central carbon. We have one, two, three, four things. Steric number of four, and there are zero lone pairs. Each one of these right here, this is a chemical bond, so there's no lone pairs on that central carbon. Zero lone pairs, steric number of four. We have a tetrahedral molecular geometry, and these bond angles should be 109.5. They'll be a little bit different because we have fluorines and hydrogens. Let's visualize what that looks like. So the purple, that'll be that central carbon atom. Let's add two hydrogen atoms, one, two. They spread out to be as far away as they can from each other. Then we have two fluorines, one, two, and you can see we end up with this tetrahedral molecular geometry, and the bond angles would be about 109.5. A little different here, again, because we have fluorines and hydrogens mixed. If we wanted to look at the electron geometry, that would also be tetrahedral because we don't have any lone pairs here on the central carbon atom. So our molecular geometry and electron geometry for CH2F2 is tetrahedral. Let's go back to our Lewis structure. We could also use the AXE notation to figure out the molecular geometry or shape here for CH2F2. A would be the central atom, that's the carbon here. X, that's the number of atoms attached, one, two, three, four. And then E, that's the number of lone pairs. But again, the carbon doesn't have any lone pairs. All of its electrons, they're involved in these chemical bonds here. So we don't have E. If you look up this AX4, you'll find that it's tetrahedral. And the bond angles again, 109.5, about 109.5. This is Dr. B with the molecular geometry for CH2F2. We also looked at the electron geometry and the bond angles. Thanks for watching.